One thing that I forgot to do the other day that I want to go back and add is inside of our index.ejs file. Um, so last time we did, I guess, just to take a slight step back, in server.js, we um, used express.static to specify the path to our static assets, like our CSS files or images and JavaScript files. But I actually wanted to then use one of our images. And one of the images we have under assets IMG is our like GitHub Husky logo. So in index EJS, let's add this in, okay? Um, where did I want to put that? Yeah, let's make this look like a little bit more like a site other than just a button. So in the main section here, let's add an image. So this is going to be the image tag. And we're going to specify a source of IMG slash SE, uh, what was it? There's a lot of stuff there. SE GitHub dash image dot PNG. Notice that I did not, as part of this path, specify assets, okay? Um, and that is because in server.js, um, it's, it's only, like, it's not, when it's looking for slash IMG, this is the route that redirects to assets IMG. So I only need to put this part because this is, like, the key that then redirects to here. All right, so whatever word I put here for my images, it doesn't have to be IMG. It could be strawberry ice cream. Um, I would then here say strawberry ice cream slash se github image dot png. So that's a, a common thing that I get confused on sometimes. Um, we should always have an alt property in our images um, to increase accessibility of our web apps um, and explain what they are. In this case, I'm going to call this the Husky Code logo. Um, I'm going to specify a width and a height. I'm going to do it as 100 pixels and a height as 100. And then I will close my image tag. And when I save it, it nicely reformats it so everything is, is easy to read. Let's also add a header. So I'm going to add an H1 header that says Habits of Mind Journal. This is the web app that we're creating. Here's the cool thing. Because everything is running with Nodemon, when I switch here and refresh this page, oops, my breakpoint's still on. I'm gonna click to disable the breakpoint and hit continue. When I refresh the page, um, I didn't have to start and restart the web app. Nodemon did that for me. Here's the image, here's the header. The button's still there as before. Doesn't look great, but that's okay. We're, we're early on here. But we're definitely loading assets both CSS and image assets um, statically, which is great. All right. Question, yes. Yeah, it, well, it's specifically for Node.js servers. Mm hmm Yeah, and you can even use Nodemon for stuff like, oh, the server crashed, and I want to restart it, and stuff like that, too. So, Like on a production system or something? Yeah. We usually use a different tool, but yes. Yeah. We use something called PM2, Process Manager 2, is what we use to manage processes on our production server. So, Um... All right, let's make this button do something useful. That's a good good place to start. Um, so let's look at index.ejs where we left off. Um, here is our create entry button. We assigned it a class, which is gonna make it easier to work with things. Um, so now we wanna associate a, an event handler, a listener to this button like we did before um, earlier in the unit. Um, and in order to do that, we are going to need to, um, in our index EJS file here, we need to actually include a script that will run, that will add the listener for this button here. 
So after this comment for where the main site finishes, let's add and include via uh, the script tag. And the source of our script is going to be JS index dot JS. And again, the reason why I'm specifying JS here is because in the server file, we said if it starts with slash JS, look inside of the folder assets and, and inside of that, look in the folder JS. And so we're going to look for an index.js file here. It doesn't exist yet. We're about to create it. But that's why we again say index slash JS slash index.js. So let's create it. Um, I'm going to right click on the JS folder and say new file and type index.js. Oops, I'm going to try to do that. Index.js. Um, and let's add a little header comment here so we know what goes on here. Um, I know I've been harping on this a lot but I'm going to continue to do so by having a comment here to remind us that this index.js file contains client side JavaScript functions. This JavaScript code is going to run on the client because it's included by the HTML page. Okay. It's not running on our node server. Primarily, primarily this will consist of event handlers to fetch data from the node server. That's pretty much what we use this for. All right, so let's create, uh, we need a reference to the button that we specified in our index EJS file. So that is the create entry button. And just as we've done before, this isn't new. I hope this looks familiar. We're gonna call the query selector method. And I'm gonna specify a selector of button.createEntry. So the type of the element followed by the class name. And then I'm going to say create entry button dot add event listener. And I'm going to add in a listener on the click event. And then I'm going to specify again with the arrow function, the function to be invoked when the button is clicked. So arrow function syntax here. What are we going to do? Um, we are going to redirect the client, meaning the browser, to the slash create entry path. When we click on the create entry button, we're going to go to a different page. There are many different ways to do this. Um, I think one of the most straightforward ways and the one that I'm going to demonstrate and we're going to stick with is by simply setting the location property on the window. Um, the window object is an object that is already created for us because this code is running inside of a web browser. The window object refers to the current web browser window. Um, it has a property called location, which is like um, where, what page we're on. We can simply change that to create entry. That is a really easy way to go to a different page. This will result in sending a new HTTP GET request for that path, that endpoint. If I switch to the browser and refresh and click Create Entry, I get an error. Cannot get slash Create Entry, okay? And if I go back and look at the debug console, did I get the message here? I guess I don't, we don't have a log message here, but I get it here at least in the client. Cannot get slash create entry. This happens all the time when we're developing our web apps. All this means is that the client made a request, specifically an HTTP get request for an endpoint that we don't support. And we don't support it because we just haven't written the code yet. We're about to do that, right? But I wanted to show you what it looks like when we request a route that we haven't written code for. So let's write code for it. So to write code for this route, um, we need to go back to router.js. That's where we keep all of our routes. 
and we already have a section here for the root, just a single slash. Um, so we're just going to add another one. So after this first route, we're going to do another route. So I'm going to do route.get, just like we did before, because the, we're responding to an HTTP um, like get request. And this, I'm going to say slash create entry. That's our new endpoint. And when that endpoint is requested, I am going to specify the um, function that will be invoked. And it's going to be just like the one above. It takes two parameters, the request and the response. So here's my arrow function, identical to what we did up here. Um, and we are going to render, uh, we'll invoke the render method on the response object. And we're going to render the create entry page. There we go. That's all it takes. Well, that's almost all it takes to create a new route. We're not quite done, right? So if I switch back to the page and refresh it again, let me go back actually, refresh it, click on create entry. Now I get a different type of error, okay? Um, and I get an error that we failed to look up the view create entry in the views directory. It's actually giving me a lot of good information here, which is really nice. Um, a lot of these functions aren't us, and so like not so helpful, right? Um, but, Do, 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 express, ah, so we can see where like that failed, like it couldn't find that. Um, so this is, this is still a pretty good error message. It expected to find a view called create entry in this particular views directory. Okay, well, let's go look. Here's our views directory. There is no file called create entry, cause, just because we haven't created it yet. But again, I want you to see like when we miss a step, what the error looks like because it's gonna happen, like we're, it happens all the time. And then you'll know like, oh yeah, I forgot to create the view file. The what thing? Cannot get? Did you add that and save it? You have to refresh the page too in the client. Uh, does NodeMon print that it's restarted your server? Right, but did you did you run it the other way? And then you never need to stop the debugger. I mean, you could always stop and restart the debugger and it will kill the port as long as you've started it through the run menu instead of the run code. Okay. Like, do you still have the ports from yesterday? Like, open? So you have to kill all those node processes. Oh, you can just restart. That'll do it too. Like, restart the computer, and it'll start everything fresh. And then you should be all set. But if not, let me know. But that should totally fix it. Um, oh, let's add the view. So I'm going to right-click on the views folder. And I'm going to make a new file called createentry.ejs. I'm going to copy all of index.ejs because a lot of this code's the same. So I'm just going to do control A, select all, control C, copy, click on create entry, control V, paste. This way I'm including the header and the footer. I've got this main stuff as before. I've got the image. Um, I'm going to change the header though to say, what should I say? Create habits of mind journal entry because we're on a different page now. Um, and I'm going to delete this button. We're going to do something different here. I'm going to also change the script. So the index.js script is JavaScript function specific to the index page. We're going to have a different JavaScript file for functions specific to the create entry page. So we'll 
specify the create entry.js file here. But you can kind of see a standard structure here, right? As we do our second page, same header, same footer, change the name of the script. Um, some of the HTML is going to be the same, but we're going to change it for this, this new page. Um, this page is going to be a page on which we can create a habits of mind journal entry. So there's going to be like a form we fill out, not a form in the technical HTML form element sense, but like a form more conceptually. So I'm going to create a div um, that will just hold all of this form stuff. Um, and we're going to have a bunch of labels um, and then different type of input elements. So we have not done this with HTML before. So this HTML stuff is going to be new. Um, a label is the text associated with an input element. Um, and this is a good way to do things, again, for accessibility, because then like screen readers and stuff in this case are going to associate the label date with this input element that we're going to create um, associated with it. So the type of this input element is date. There's actually a, a date input element for selecting the specific calendar date. I'm going to give it a class name of date as well, which we're going to need later in order to refer to it in our JavaScript code. We're also going to create a label and associated input for which habit of mind we are capturing in our journal. So we're going to do another input of type text. We're just going to type in the name of the habit of mind. And I'm going to assign a class to that too. I'm just going to make it HOM because I don't want to type a lot of stuff. We'll create another label and another input element for the actual journal entry itself. And here we're going to use something called a text area. So a text area is like a bigger box where we can type in like a paragraph. And I'm going to assign that a class of content. And then finally, we're going to have an input element of type submit, and this is going to be our submit button. We use an input element of type submit as opposed to a traditional button um, because this way it will be tied um, to the, like your enter key on your keyboard to make it easier to submit the form um, efficiently using the keyboard. The class is going to be submit because again, we need to refer to it. Um, we can label that button whatever we want by specifying a value, and I think submit is a good name, so we're going to stick with that. Cool. We're not quite done, but let's test this incrementally, right? Let's go back to our web page and see what this looks like. So we'll go back here, we'll go back here, I'll refresh the page, I'll click on create entry. Hey, now it actually took me to a new page. It's got the new header. Um, the form looks weird in terms of how it's formatted here. We'll deal with that later. But I do have like a calendar um, input here where I can choose a specific date. That's pretty cool. I can type my habit of mind. And the journal entry looks... Oh, I'm like, that's an odd journal entry. All right. Let's fix that. I forgot the closing tag on text area. Text, oh, because I, I need to do it like, no, I think I just need to do it. I think text area, I have to do this way. Like that, right? All right. Let me refresh and see if that's right. Okay, much better. All right, so I'll go back to the code so you all can see that. Sorry, thank you for the good catch. So with text area here, I actually need an explicit closing tag. I did not have that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. That's why it showed up that way. So I could put something here like... Um, my journal entry or something, right? And then if I refresh, I'll see it show up there. Cool, okay, thank you. Oh yeah, I like that, because then you just start typing and disappears. 
we'll have to figure that out. That would be better usability. All right. Um, what else do we need? Let's see. I think we need to add some JavaScript code. So let's do that. We'll keep it super simple for now. Um, we're going to right click. We're going to go up here to our client side assets, right click on JS, say new file, type create entry. I tried to do that. Create entry.js. Um, and I'm going to copy the same header because I really like this reminder that whenever I look at one of these client side JavaScript files, um, this is like, it reminds me, this is on the client. It's not on my node server. All right, so let's find that submit button. So we'll create a variable called submit button. We'll call query selector, just like we're accustomed to doing. The element type is input. The class name is submit. On that submit button, we'll call add event listener just like we've done before. And we'll specify a click listener just like we've done before. And we'll specify an arrow function just like we've done before. But not like we've done before. We need to actually assign to variables in our script the values that the user has typed into all those different input elements. So we need to get the values entered by the user. So we need to get the date they specified. And we're gonna do that exactly the same way as we got the reference to like the submit button. So we're gonna do document.querySelector and we're gonna specify the type of the element, which is input and the class name, which is date. That gives us a reference to that element in the document. And then we're going to get the value property, whoop, the value property of that element, which will be in this case like the date. We're going to do write the same code here to get the habit of mind and the journal content as well. So I'll create a variable called habit of mind. I'll do document query selector input.hom because that's the class name we specified dot value. And then we'll get the actual content of the journal entry. Again, document.querySelector. Here, the element type is text area. Um, and the class name is content. But the property is still called value. That's pretty standard. For now, we're just going to log all this. Okay, We're just going to log it on the client side to make sure like we actually got the stuff off the page and out of the elements. Um, so this is just part of like our incremental development process here, where we're just going to kind of take one step at a time. So I'm going to log the date, and I'll concatenate that with the habit of mind, and I'll concatenate that with the content. And then just for now, we will redirect to the home page. So we'll do window.location. We'll go back to the home page. To provide a little bit of insight and a little bit of transparency in terms of what we're, what we're doing together here is each little thing we're doing together in this web application is something that I expect you're going to do many times in your project and you're gonna to need to do in your summative lab coming up here in a few days. Um, so what I'm trying to do is, is give you a simple example for each one of these little concepts. And as you probably noticed, I'm doing a screencast for each one of the concepts. So multiple screencasts per day, and they're all going in our YouTube playlist. Um, so that if you need to, not only do you have an example in your project where you can look at the code, you can also go back and like rewatch the video when you're like, wait, I need to do a form on a web page, and I don't remember how to get the values out of the HTML input elements. Oh, you can find that particular video and watch that um, to, to get that refresher.
So that's what we're trying to capture here. Basically, when we're done here in a couple of days, you'll have hopefully a really good set of resources, both in terms of code and video um, to make you successful, not only for the summative lab, but next, next semester as well. So, all right, let's try this out. We're gonna switch back here. I wanna go actually back to my homepage just cause I wanna kind of see the whole flow. I click on create entry. Cool, there's the date, finding humor, my journal entry. I uh, knew what was funny today. Uh, I want to use all the parentheses because we were talking about lists. You can do whatever you want. In my own odd way, I find this funny. There we go. All right, so there's my text. When I hit submit, we can see like what happened, right? So let's look at the output. Huh, there's no output. Okay. It's on the client side, absolutely. So I have to look here in the JavaScript console in the client to actually see it. I'll have to have it open in advance. That's kind of weird. Did it clear itself? Oh, like when I refresh the page, it, I lost the previous page. Does that happen in Chrome? Like it was there and then it disappeared because maybe that's a Safari thing. Maybe it's not a Safari thing. Oh yeah, it clears it. Huh, interesting. Okay, I had to think about that some. Because we went to a different page, it cleared it. So, like if I wanted to see it, I could like set a breakpoint here before it goes. Something like that. Oh, this is, I can't, this is uh, client side. Sources. All right, we'll worry about that later. Um, I'll think more about that and give have a better answer next week.